Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Anything OU podcast. Today, we have Robert Reynolds joining us from the Damn Good Dog podcast. You can check all the links in the, in the description below if you want to go check them out after the episode. They're live on YouTube on Mondays and Wednesdays, so be sure to check them out on all things Georgia football. So we're going to go ahead and get right into this, Robert. So give us your your little your little preview you know, of who you are, what your podcast is about, and all of the above. Well, uh, DGD Podcast is ran by myself and Juan Daniels, former Georgia receiver. Um, Actually, top 10 in receiving yards. I'm going to give him a shout out there, uh, Georgia history. Um, But now he – so obviously Juan, you know, what we try to do is is give a fans and a player's perspective on Georgia football, right? Uh, Obviously, you know, Juan, if you're not familiar with him, he played with Kirby when Kirby played at Georgia, Heinz Ward, different guys like that. So, he, you know, he knows Kirby, things like that. So it's it's nice to have an idea, uh, you know, from that perspective of, you know, the football program, right? So, you know, we talk recruiting, we talk the state of the team, we, you know, during the season, you know, we're going to be talking previews and reviews and and trust me, when the cocktail party comes, we're going to have a celebration <laughs> because we just know, you know, different all these different things. Um, but no, so right now during the off season, right, we're uh, actually Monday and Friday. Uh, we will be moving to Monday, Wednesday during the season um, just because, you know, it's easier for Juan to travel. Uh, he has a son that just uh, is a freshman at Stanford. Oh wow! So we're so we're moving from like I said we're making that change in this uh, during the season to help accommodate travel and less stress there. But uh, but yeah, no, a little bit about myself, right? Uh, North Carolina, not a Georgia boy, but from North Carolina. Um, been a dog fan for oh, I don't know since 07, 08, roughly. It, look, North Carolina never had right. They never had good football growing up. You just had the three thirty right. SEC game. So once I, you know, obviously once I was old enough to get ESPN, uh, then you start being able to see things. So, you know, no Sean Marino kind of got me to be where I want to be, led me to be a dog fan. Uh, So, you know, obviously that right there, uh, you know, just covering, right, just covering Georgia football, sitting there, you know, watching us win a national title game. It is what it is. Yeah. (laughs) We kind of do a little bit. Of no this. hype to that at that, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Sooner Nation, I mean, before we got on this on this video, I asked Robert, you know, how you doing? And he was like, man, I'm doing all right. And I was like, man, if I had just recently won the football championship, I'd be ecstatic. And his response was, man, I, I gave it about three months, and then I was on to the next one. And I was just like, mm-hmm. three weeks. Three weeks. Three, three weeks. weeks. That's right. Three weeks, weeks. Three weeks. For me, like, man, I've never seen I, – I, I was born in 2000, so, you know, I don't really count that. Ooh. It still counts as a national championship. I, I've never I, I remember – I remember when – I remember when y'all won y'all's national title, Stoops. Yeah, I, I – no, what BV I remember – was the D.C., if I'm not mistaken. He was on the, squ- on the squad there. Yep. That's yeah. right. What I remember is losing in the Rose Bowl in 2017 and double over. We don't talk That's about what that. I remember. Uh, you know what? I'm going to be nice today. It's not my show. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> but, I could. So go ahead and being, being, you know, y'all are kind of going through similar things that we are uh, minus the staff changes because our off season has been nuts, you know, as far as recruiting wise last year, this year, we just got to commit a couple hours ago. I I saw that. That's a good guy. That's a good pickup too. Yeah. 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 Four-star athlete could be more, more happier with how our recruiting is going. I thought we were a dead program, but that's, that's just me. So give us, you know, (laughs) give us that breakdown of Georgia, you know, the coaching, the offense, the defense, what you expect scheme wise and all the above this upcoming year. Well, I mean, you know, you, if you're Georgia, right, I think you look at some turnover. You, d- you didn't see, you know, like Clemson, right? Clemson lost o- OC and D.C., right? Obviously, Georgia loses their defensive coordinator uh, to Oregon. Strangely enough, that's our first game, but we're not talking about that just yet. Uh, you know, l- listen, we lost Cortez, Hankton to LSU as a receivers coach. Uh, you know, bring him, uh, bring in Brian McClendon. I love Brian McClendon, his former time at Georgia, you know, we know what he's able to recruit. Now, he was a running backs guy at uh, Georgia the first time. But, listen, if if you hear the names, if, if I ring off Keith Marshall, Todd Gurley, right, he had a hand in Sonny Michelle and Nick Chubb, right, we know he can recruit. And then, you know, then you lose, you know, you bring in Coach uh, Uzo Deribe, um, you know, kind of a, un, a little bit of an unknown name. Uh, I'm telling you right now that I, I am looking forward to seeing what he's going to be able to do uh, off the edge with those guys. Uh, and then Fran Brown uh, from Rutgers, uh, you know, our key piece, our, our chess piece 
uh, for guys in the Northeast. Right now, I'm telling you right now, I think he had a hand in helping pick up uh, Joe Nell Aguero for us. Um, yeah, and just waiting to see what these guys look like. Right, first scrimmage was today. And just see things, how things play out. Um, you know, but listen, obviously, you know, coming off of a national title, you know, from what from what I'm hearing and things like that, listen, I don't think the hangover is going to happen. Um, I, I just don't think Kirby's going to do that. I, I think you look yeah, at what Kirby either. did at Alabama. I think he's won enough, to, even as a you know, obviously not as a head coach, but enough national titles as a DC to understand what it's like and know what it takes, right? So you know he's not going to let people sit there and hang over, right, get that hangover, um, challenging the team, right? I think that's what you need to do, you know, coming off of, right, coming off of a national title. And and obviously there's a lot of guys to replace, you know, you, 15 draft picks uh, in one draft is a record. A lot. <laughs> that's a record. Now, they weren't all defense, uh, just five of them in the first round, but we're not going to talk more about that, but – yeah, you know, look at what we've got on the roster. I feel like we'll be more than fine with uh I wouldn't say replacing, but uh finding ways to get these guys uh successful. Yeah, I mean we've kind of gone through the you know summer stuff. We had people leave via the transfer portal. The way it happened to you guys happened to us in a different way, right? Our coach left in an awkward way. And- and in my opinion, a bad way to leave. And he took some kids with him, even though he said he took kids from the transfer portal. We all saw the writing between. Oh, I did too. I, I so, saw it. I didn't. I'm, I'm not even an Oklahoma fan. I saw it. Trust me. I already, yeah. I already said my word about it. And, and so, Robert's you know, been a real one through all this. So, <laughs> if any of you guys in the sooner in the sooner Twitterverse listen in or anywhere else on there, like Robert's a dude. Like he's he's been on top of this pretty much from the moment the news broke. He keeps it a hundred for sure. But, you know, it, it, kind of, it kind of happened to us similarly. I mean, the, the thing with us is the same thing that Kirby had to go to. You know, can – okay, great, he's a head coach now. But can he recruit? Can he get it done? Can he recruit? All that fun stuff. And that's kind of what we're going through. And so, I, in my biased opinion, I think the way that we lost our players and our staff and came back to get a top eight recruiting class before Brent even coached a snap, not only was it a beautiful sight to see, but it was insanely impressive. I'll say this. I think looking at looking at what Oklahoma had to experience, right? Because when and this is just from an outsider perspective. I know y'all are Oklahoma fans, but yeah, I'm not going to say his name, but you know what I'm talking about. He he kind of did y'all dirty, but now um, you can say it, Tebow. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but but not nah, so. You know, looking at what you know, looking at the way that he rebounded, right? Now, at the same time, you know, I saw what they did, bringing in Stoops to help out. Like, that was a smooth move, great PR, not going to lie. That's a good move. That's what you needed to do to reestablish the culture that y'all needed, right? So the fact that you bring in a top 10 class out of that, you know, that just shows you that yeah. kids are buying into what he's bringing. And it also helps to have his pedigree at Clemson as a DC. Just going to say that there. Um, you know, kids, uh, with Oklahoma coming into the SEC in a couple of years, in my opinion, y'all, it might be a blessing in disguise. Um, you know, getting that uh, that defensive identity, because I think you'll see Brent Venables build it from the inside out. Uh, Lincoln is not about inside at all; he's outside and just roll with it. And that's just what we've seen. I think you change that identity. Listen, Kirby knows it, Saban knows it, and I'm telling you, BV knows it too from his time at Clemson. You win from the inside out, Absolutely and I think that's like what's that. going to happen. I really like that. Hey, so just kind of keeping it on the Georgia front here. Um, so like you did say, you guys did lose 15 players to the NFL draft. Um, if I remember right, it was two or three transfer key transfers. Uh, you had, let me think here. I think JT I think, to West Virginia was. Yeah, we had JT them. to West Virginia. Yeah, JT, you had Jermaine Burton left to Bama. Uh, you had, was it, was it? Did Major leave this? No, Major was last season. I think you had Otis Reese go to Ole Miss. Uh, Latavius Brini went to uh, Arkansas. That was a sneaky pickup for Sam Pittman, by the way. Uh, He's a sneaky good coach. (laughs) No, no. 
listen, if you've listened to my show and if you haven't, you'll understand I have the utmost respect for Sam Pittman. And I think he's done more than a phenomenal job at Arkansas, taking them from what they were prior to him coming in there, which was a dumpster fire, and turned them into a formidable threat in the SEC West. That's saying a lot. And he did it very quickly, very quickly. Yeah. So, so with all that to say, so who would you say, and we'll start with the defense first, because that's the most notable one since, you know, you talk about Georgia, Georgia and what they lost last mm-hmm. year, it was defense and a lot of people. And I, we both hear the narratives, a Georgia didn't play anybody. And then B, well, they lost all their defensive players. So who's going to be the player that you circle and you, you tell us, Hey, when you watch a Georgia game, watch this person on defense, who, who should we be looking out for there? Well, I think, the mo- I, I think the I think the mo- well for breakout season is a little bit different, but to to kind of back to preface this, I think the media is already talking about this, and that's Jalen Carter. Um, you have Jalen Carter, and in my opinion, Nolan Smith. Uh, you're going to hear get talked up a lot uh, from this, you know, in this off season. Listen, Jalen Carter, and you might consider this a hot take, but I'm not. Jalen Carter was the best D line that we had last year, and I he was a backup. That a hard take, yeah, no, he was a backup, folks. Um, so when you, you know, when you look into that situation there, you know, you obviously look at what he was in front of him, right? Jordan Davis, the, the, the heart and soul of that defense. I don't care. Anyone says he was the most important piece there. Um, you know, and now you look at guys, how can you replace his production? You're not going to, you're, you're not going to replace him. How do you get that production out of what you have? Uh, Jalen Carter playing on that, uh, you're playing at the three tech. I think it's going to be key. Um, but if you're talking about a breakout year, there's a, I mean, there's several uh, for me that I can think of, but if I had to choose one, I think you look at, I'm going to give a one, a one B here. I think one, a, you look at Zion Logue. I think that's going to be your, I think that's going to be the guy that you see playing where Jordan Davis was. You're not, like I said, I don't think you're going to see the, I don't think you're going to see the same schemes that you saw with Jordan Davis. Uh, You know, and listen to Kobe Dean in the backfield, right? Listen, if you watch Philadelphia's preseason game tonight or last night, I mean, I'm just telling you right now, that's what we saw at Georgia all season last year, just what it was. Um, but now that they're in the pros, you're not going to see the same thing. You'll see something close. Uh, but give me Zion Logue, and then I'm going to take – I'm going to call a freshman here. Uh, I, I think I think he's going to be the best freshman in this, like, this whole cycle, Michael Williams. Michael yeah. Williams, that kid okay. – if you, I know it's not college level just yet, but if you go back to the all American practices, nobody could stop that man. Nobody. And when you look at what he's been able to do, you know, it, you know, during his high school career, uh, training with Chuck Smith, uh, that if you're not familiar with him, he's a former NFL guy, D lineman, uh, pass rush guru kind of thing. When you look at what Chuck Smith raved about him, and then you see what he was able to do in San Antonio. Nobody could stop him. And then already hearing excellent reviews from him, he's going to see the field early. He's going to see the field often because we rotate so much. And it wouldn't surprise me next year. I know I'm kind of getting ahead of this. If he's a starter next year, I just see that's going to happen. Kids too good to stay off the field. So I'm I'm probably going to give you one, and you're probably going to look at me and say it's you know it's not really a breakout year, but I would say you know Keely Ringo for a um, for probably one of the best corners in college football is probably going to be what I say for and and I'll say that for a break. I mean it's hard to have another breakout year when you're already a really good player in college football. So it's. I think he takes that step to. Uh, I, see, I see that. I mean, and it's yeah, not. It's and not. It's, it's not far off to think that. I mean, let's be honest. Last year, our defensive front seven was so good that they didn't really get tested that much. So now you're looking at him. Now that he's the true number one guy, you look at. Is this? He's got to step up and take the reins. And, and so far, right. all, you know, right through the fall camp, obviously rolling number one. The, the, I'm telling you right now, there is a damn battle going on for that quarterback <laughs> two spot right now, and, and it's in a good it's a good competition. It, it's not like That's, one of those things where like who, who's just going to step up to make it. Nah, all these guys are able to play. Who's just rolling, you know, beside them? Uh, listen, there's some there's some dudes out there in the, in that DB uh, in that DB room, but yeah, I, I mean, Ke- Keeley's not far off to say that it's a breakout year. I think, you know, keep it. You know, I'm trying to trying to keep this as you know 100 as possible. 
Right. Like outside, outside uh, of the pick six, outside of the pick six, there were several times he got, he got cooked a little bit, Tennessee, South Carolina, they, they got picked on a little bit when they were able to, you know, and, and listen, I think that's, you know, a testament to him learning through his first year and his first year where he didn't really even get tested that much because nobody could throw the ball too much. So right. this year we'll see what happens. I think you're going to see teams, you know, try to shoot, you know, try to see what happens. But, but no, it's not far. It's not uh, strange at all to hear that name, honestly. Now, same question for you for the offense. Breakout player for the offense. Mm. I'll tell you right now. I think there's so many good ones. Give me Darnell Washington. You know, I was thinking you were going to say Darnell Washington. Um, So I'm going to give you one um, as well. And I think it's going to be a Marius Mims. Ooh, I could see that, but hear me out on this. With with our offensive line, I wouldn't say Mims more so than I would say Devin Willock. Devin Willock. Okay. The reason why I say that is because Devin Willock is more than likely going to take your left guard spot. I'm I, listen. I am super excited for this offensive line because you're bringing in several returning starters back. You're getting Tate Ratlish back to for that right guard spot or left right. guard, however they want to do it. I'm more so right guard probably. But when you look at the offensive line with what we've got with these guys, if they're healthy, you know, from left tackle to right, you're looking at Broderick Jones was held his own. Think about this. Broderick Jones held his own against Will Anderson in the national title game. (laughs) That's not an easy task. No. No. Now, at the same time, right, listen, he got a lot better as the season went on, but that's just something that was interesting to me. He was actually holding his own against Will Anderson, and we know what Will Anderson's about. Um, you know, but when you have Will Anderson, I think you see Devin Willock at left guard. Cedric Van Pran, probably the best center in the country. And, and, he, and he got a lot better as the season went on, held his own against Clemson. And it just got better and better and better. Uh, and then, like I said, Tate Rattledge. Tate Rattledge is a monster. And he was hurt the second play of the Clemson game for the season. Now you're getting him back. And then at right tackle, the quiet Warren McClendon, sometimes being, you know, not hearing your name a lot is a good thing. Yeah, he's he's able to hold his own at the right tackle. Now, listen, Mims is going to play. He's just too damn good not to. Right. But if I had a breakout on the offensive line, Devin Willis, dude is a okay. mo- dude is huge, and I think you're starting to see him get to the point where he understands he's just that big, and he's going right. to lean on you. He's <laughs> going to lean on you, and that's what's going to be the problem. <laughs> so but I don't. No, okay, oh, sorry. So I have like a, a little two-part question for you real quick. So, um, and it's one that I was thinking of while just sitting here listening to you. Who would you say this year, and even last year maybe during the championship run, who, who for you is a sleeper that Georgia fans and just the whole nation should really know about? Somebody that you think is, you know, even underrated maybe. What was a sleeper last year or coming into the season? A little bit of both. Yeah, whichever. I think, I think, Give me Lab McConkey. Everybody focused on Brock Bowers, rightfully so. A.D. Mitchell made some key plays right in the national title game, that catch, you know. Lab McConkey is going to be a problem. And a lot of people don't realize this because everybody wants to focus on losing Jermaine Burton, all losing Jermaine Burton. Yeah. Fair. But if you didn't know this, Lab McConkey was taking his reps away during the season last year. Auburn game, listen, there's a viral photo. There is, so I don't know if you are familiar with Georgia history, but there's a picture uh, back in the 90s of uh, Ugga reaching out and trying to snap at an Auburn player. In my opinion, the picture that I'm talking about basically burns burns a cornerback on a deep route. I'll explain this a little bit. Burns a corner on a deep route. He scores. But the picture has the Auburn guy on his back in the air, and he's got his hand on McConkie's towel. (laughs) <laughs> the hand towel, and that's all it is. And Conkey's ran by him. That is that is the modern day Auburn picture for me. But not even that. I, I think what people fail to realize is not only is he an, I think he's a great receiver. He's not got the like the name. It's it's one of those that you're not familiar with. Excellent route runner, creating separation, just like AD. But he's 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 quick. He's very quick, and I think it's deceitful until you see what happens against Auburn. If you watch that play, listen, he got past the defense a lot. Nobody realized that. Now this year, coming into the season, you have AD as your wide receiver one. 
It's not going to surprise me if you see uh, outside of AD, opposite of him, Lat McConkey. The, the other, the other one that I had just really quickly for you was for all the Oklahoma fans and even other fan bases that would be watching this right now. What would you tell them about Georgia fans and just the Georgia, you know, the fan base? What would I tell Oklahoma fans about the Georgia fan base? Mm-hmm. Not all of us bark like dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of the some of the realest fans I know on Twitter um, are Georgia fans. So I will say though, y'all have my y'all have, in my opinion, the best mascot in the country. I love love the Bolton. Man, love them. It's okay, man. I'm telling you right now, that is the most pampered. Listen, if Peter tries to come to Athens, the the university in the state of Georgia is going to run him away because that dog lives <laughs> a better life than any one of us come all of us combined. I oh, guarantee. you know it. No, 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 no. There is a funny story. Ugga has his own suite in Athens when they come up for games. He had, like he, there was I forgot there was an analyst or something that was telling a story. He was staying in a he was staying in a hotel. They moved him out of his room because that was Ugga's room. Oh my gosh! That dog. I'm telling you, <laughs> when that dog is pampered, that dog is yes. So so it, if we ever believe in reincarnation, we all want to come back as Ugga. <laughs> oh, no doubt, no doubt. Listen, that that dog ain't got to worry about a thing. And, and and what I mean by that is like, if you're not familiar with Ugga, all right, Ugga gets his own dog house on the sidelines. With a, you know, it, it listen, it's got its own AC unit. It's got a, a little screen, like a plexiglass door for when it's raining. It's it's got ice bags on the bottom. Because well, listen, bulldog. If you're not familiar with bulldogs, bulldogs, you know, they get hot and everything and things like that. So they have heat and AC AC unit. When it gets cold, if it does, they, they, I'm telling you, they treat this dog like a damn king. Man, I want to be that dog now. Me too. I know, right? <laughs> I, thought, I thought my life was cool, you know, nice car. No. Listen, he, I guarantee he eats steak and he don't even have to make it himself. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have to pay for it or cook it. Man, it must be the life. I, I, if, if he was able to, if he was able to uh, consume an alcoholic beverage, I guarantee you wouldn't have to worry about paying for it. <laughs> All right, so let's – uh since Christian took us off the rails there a little bit, let's get back onto this. So um, <laughs> keeping the offensive mindset, who is your prediction for your MVP for offense this year? Offensive MVP? <clears throat> That's tough. I'll tell you right now, I mean, you can kind of look at a multitude of ways here. I, I think you're going to see us pass more, but not turn into a, like, if you're familiar with Georgia history, right, it's been run, 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 run. Right. And if you haven't noticed, since Todd Munkin got to Georgia as the offensive coordinator, slowly that stuff's changing. It's changing. Um, it would not surprise me you know, if, if Stetson Bennett was. Um, however, if I'm going to give kind of a sleeper here. It would not surprise me if one of our running backs were. Because okay. both of our running backs, it could go either way on this. Kenny McIntosh, I think, might be the better shot here, but I love, I'm in love with Kendall Milton, what he's able to do. He's just a physical runner that can catch. Um, go back on our G-Day, our spring game, 32-yard touchdown, look great out of the backfield, down the field for that matter, and then trucks a guy and makes another guy miss, and he's in the touchdown. Stetson's got a ton of weapons, right? And all the hate right. Stetson gets, you know, come at me with that because it's, it's bullshit <laughs> to me. However, you know, Kenny McIntosh is a do-it-all guy. In the backfield, and I think same with Ken, uh, Kendall Milton as well. Why well, you're going to see him platoon in? But right, get, give me surprisingly, give me Kenny McIntosh. I think he can just do it all. I like it. Um, I'm not going to give you one because I'm not going to lie. I don't know your team nearly as well um, as you do, so I'm not going to sit here and say an MVP. You know, well, a lot of people. From a, a high lot level, of people, how about this? From a high level standpoint, what would you say? Would you say you Brock know, Bowers? <laughs> I was leaning Brock Bowers, and then, you know, I'm looking at this uh, this depth chart from uh, our lads because that's how I figure out kind of a little – they do a great job with putting out depth charts yeah. before a depth chart when when you don't have access to them. And I was sitting there, and I was I was watching – I was looking at Brock Bowers, and I sat there, and I saw Arik Gilbert behind him. And I said, you know, he could sneaky be their MVP of the season because if if his head is right, it is, and he and if he is committed to playing football, and I know everybody has this person in their in their program that 
if this guy plays to his potential, if he's focused on football, I mean, heck, we have some of those in ours on both sides of the ball for Oklahoma. Yeah. But I mean, it's when we when we think about him and we kind of think about how he got to Georgia, it was one of those things. Is he committed to football? And if he's truly committed to football, I think he might be your MVP and it might be amazingly great for Brock Bowers because he'll find himself not, I, I think he's going to have a lot of stress on himself to back up what he just did and having someone there that can take that stress away from him, I think will be amazingly helpful for him and make him play to his best version. And they're both going to make each other play to their best ability. So I, I think a Gilbert is really going to be one that not a lot of people are talking about right now, shockingly. Mm-hmm. But I think is one that when we look up and, you know, I have you guys 12 and 0, um, and we'll get to that here in just a minute. But when we look up to the SEC championship game and we're like, holy cow, Reed Gilbert's really good at football. And I think mm-hmm. that's going to, and that's my guy. And again, that's not me knowing your team as in depth as you do. And like, if you were to do the same for our team, like, I'm sure, I, I, I'm I would, sure you would probably would, give me I would like butcher it. <laughs> you I would, would probably give me Dylan yeah. Gabriel or something like that, and I wouldn't blame you at give all. Give me a receiver. <laughs> give me. I, I'll, I'll take that receiver guy. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I, I will say this though. You know, you talk about Eric Gilbert, and you look. A lot of people forget as a freshman at LSU, he led the team in receiving yards. And that's why I say oh, it. As a receiver, not a tight right. end, a receiver. He. So the thing about it, what one of the interesting things about. Eric's situation, right? He comes back to the team this year, this offseason, almost 300 pounds. And so during the spring, he gets down and at G Day, right? This is April. He's down to like 260, 255. He's going to keep slimming down. So keep, keep this in mind. He had two tutties in, at G Day. Yeah. And, and wow. one of them, he just, it was just, it was beautiful catch it. Stetson put him on the dot. So, you know, when you look at it though, which is kind of a, this is what's interesting to me from an offensive standpoint, this notion that Georgia lost a ton on defense is to some degree, yes, it's accurate, but the, the, the regression isn't going to be as, in my opinion, as, as a steep, right? The regression isn't going to be as steep than people okay. are expecting. But when you look at offense, what we're returning would it be surprising if I told you, if I gave you this formation with this personnel, think about this. Give me, obviously, Stetson in the offensive line. Give me A.D. Mitchell out wide. Give me Eric Gilbert, Brock Bowers, Darnell Washington, and then give me Kendall Milton in the backfield. Or, you listen, you're probably going to see us run and almost live in 13 personnel. But I'm telling you right now, Oscar Delp, shout out Mama Delp, he's a dog already. It would not surprise me to see us go fourteen personnel from time to time. No, and use I, them as and it. use them as receivers, as I, a receiver. I buy it, and, and that's that's just how. I mean, listen, if you're even, out, I think most of the national media understands that Georgia's in a situation where that tight end room is so super deep, it's insane. Just wait. That's all I'm going to say because what, you still got Brock Bowers next year. You'll probably lose Eric Gilbert and Darnell. But then you're going to bring in Pierce Sperling and Lawson Lucky. The, the tight end room is just going to – Todd Hartley's a dude. He, I call him the Mountie. He always gets his man. It's just what he does. So a little bit of a, you know, same question but flipped on the defensive side, of course. Hmm. What's the – what was the question again? That makes uh, sure. MVP. MVP. I think it's easy to say Jalen Carter. That's the one I was um, thinking with. Listen, and you're not wrong if you are. Uh, the dude is too good. Um, good even, even with the expectation that he's going to be doubled a lot, he, I guarantee you Georgia and Coach Schumann's going to get him ways to get him solos. Yeah. Will, Anderson, Will Anderson was getting solos from time to time, all right? It's just a matter of taking advantage. If you give me, a, 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 give me an MVP outside of Jalen Carter, I wouldn't be surprised to see – I think Smile Mondu is going to have a great year at linebacker, right? Losing Channing Tindall, losing Quay Walker, and Nakobe Dean. You know, that linebacker room, there's it's, it's full of young talent. You, you've got guys like Robert Bill. Robert Bill is an afterthought almost for most people. He led the team in sacks last year. He's back, right? You got Nolan Smith. Nolan Smith is coming back. 
But give oh, me Smalls. Is. Yeah, Nolan Smith. Yeah. So Yikes. when when I, when I look at it though, how do we replicate or how do we you know how do we fill the shoes left by you know Tindall and Quay Walker? Right. Listen, you you lose a first round draft pick, you lose a ridiculous third round draft pick, and an early fourth and linebacker. Give me pop, you know, pop Johnson, John, uh, Jonathan Dumas, you know, yep. Jamon Dumas Johnson. That's another one. I think you'll see an inside linebacker uh, early. But Small Mondin is just – he can cover and he can hit, but he is a freak. He's a freak. He, he's, he's like a 4-4 speed linebacker. Oh, it's wow. just insane. That's nuts. For a line, yeah, for a linebacker, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, but listen, I mean, if, if we're trying to be obvious here, I think Jalen Carter is going to be the MVP of this the, the defense. But it wouldn't surprise me if you see a linebacker because, he, you know, what Jalen Carter is able to do, I don't think you're going to see it similar to what Jordan Davis did where you just open up like Nicobe Dean to run free. Yeah. But if you get these guys collectively to take all five easily or six or however you want to look at it, it wouldn't surprise me to see a linebacker run up free. And I'm just telling you, especially with what I'm thinking is going to happen, short passing game, small money will cover it easily. And I think if, if he adapts the way I think he will, he, he's going to be a breakout guy. I'm just going to say that just long shot, but I think it'll happen. Yeah. Could so, happen. I mean, could happen. One of the things that's in any sport, right? One of the toughest things to do is when you win a championship to repeat. And, um, Looking at, I've, I've looked at you guys' schedule just a little bit, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you start out with Oregon at home, get a little tune up game, and then you go to Gamecocks, you go play South Carolina. And for me personally, I have you guys going 11 and 1. And the reason I say that is, is I think that a potential loss for you guys could be either Tennessee, just because I got to believe in Josh Heupel. He's turned, I, I believe he's turning the program around. And I, I love what I'm seeing from, from Tennessee. And then another one would be a potential in a South Carolina because they finally have a quarterback, you know, that he's got someone to throw to someone he's already experienced with Spencer Rattler with Austin Stogner. It's really just, can they stop people? And that's, that's the biggest thing is I feel like South Carolina won't struggle getting points on the board now, but you don't want football games, letting them score points as well. I think with South Carolina, you have to understand this. Well, you get Spencer Rattler, that's, and that, listen, that's a big deal. I've talked to a bunch of Gamecock guys. Yeah. That's a big deal. But the question is, can the offensive line get better? Yeah. Because they were a terrible last year. They got bullied last yeah. year. That's going to be the key for their their, their season. Is listen, I, listen, you got Marshawn Lloyd there. And listen, I, knowing, the, knowing the Gamecocks as much as I do, you have Marshawn Lloyd. You've got – Spencer Rattler, obviously, and they and they got Stogner and Josh Fan. They've got weapons, but the offensive line and the defensive line, if they step up, that's going to drive their success this year. But I'll, yeah. so, but not sorry, it's just enough. But not, I mean, when you look at the, you said eleven of one, right? Mm -hmm. You mentioned two teams that I don't even think could would be the loss. If it, I think we will go twelve and zero, but if we win eleven of one, I got a team that you're probably questioning this. But give me a loss at Mississippi State. Yeah, if we were to if we were to lose, that's a big one. They people one. people don't realize how good Will Rogers is and how no, they don't. that and offense can be. They're Texas A and M's and a bunch of people's Achilles heel, right? It's 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 the Arkansas State, and with you know, God, they just picked up a really good quarterback and, and the recruiting, and obviously he won't play for a little bit. But that's a good one that I wasn't really thinking about. You know, I mean. I, a team that's good that I think it will beat Kentucky, right? I mean, they, 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 that could be a potential game that give you struggle. I don't think that you'll lose them. I, I think I, it's I very think possible. That, you know, when I look at Kentucky, I respect what Kentucky is about. I, I, I really enjoy what Mark Soups has done, and they're giving him time to, to build that program where yeah. it needs to be. The one thing I just don't know, the way Kentucky is built, they're built to run the ball. And if you don't know Georgia, Georgia's main – To stop the – yeah, stop the run. Yeah. Now, like I said, for the past three years, you have Jordan Davis. You don't have Jordan Davis right now. Yeah. So you're going to have to make sure that your edge guys set the edge properly and your guys like Zion Logue or Nazir Stackhouse or all these guys in the middle, Tramel Waldau, however you want to look at it, 
do their job and, and stop the run. Kirby's going to make sure that we stop the run. And if we can't, we're in for some trouble. So well, I mean, what do you what do you think about the matchups on, on September 3rd with Oregon? I mean, what do you I don't think y'all will lose to them. I think Oregon's got a couple of years until they're solidified and back where they want to be. But I mean, what do you what do you think about that matchup? They're coming to y'all's house. Well, they're, I mean, they're coming to Atlanta, but, you know, listen, I don't expect Oregon to be scared, right? Because, you know, while it's a different regime, right, Oregon fans will tell you this, they they went to the they went to the shoe last year yeah, and, and put it on Ohio State. But at the same time, we are Ohio State. Even, with, even without Jordan Davis and Nicobe Dean, we're not Ohio State. However, I, I think it'll be a good game. I genuinely think it's just a matter of depth and can, can, do they have the talent to, you know what I mean? Like from a defensive standpoint, listen, they've got guys that we were heavy on and Dan Landing was heavy on. So I know he's happy to have these guys because when you look at, when you look at uh, Noah Sewell and Justin Flo there, that linebacking room is nasty. Yeah. Right? Just those two guys. Right. And like I said, have Landing having him, those two guys being, you know, being that was his, you know, niche, right, on Georgia as a linebacker's guy before the D.C. or whatever, too. He's, he's salivating at that. But the thing is, you know, you know, I think Bo Nix has better talent around him at Auburn. Like, Auburn last year, it would have been a different game had he had receivers that could actually catch a cold at that. Like, they were dropping touchdown passes and dropping passes that should have extended drives. And you, I don't see that necessarily with Oregon. Right, but at the same time, when you're playing Georgia, right, you're going to see us. Ro- you're like, listen, we're going to rotate guys. That's what we're going to do. We did it all last year. That ain't changing. Can they handle? Can, you know, can their defense handle a fresh running back in the fourth quarter? Because if you you take Kenny McIntosh, you take Kendall Milton. There's some freshmen right now. I mean, and I'm I'm, I'm I, I overlap. Uh, I left over uh, Dejon Edwards. Dejon Edwards is another guy that's underrated, in my opinion. The dude is – it kind of reminds me of Le'Veon Bell, how patient he is as a runner, yeah. but he still can do it all, right? But outside of those three, Branson Robinson is a man. Like, he, that dude is a grown man as, as a true freshman. And then Andrew Paul has probably gotten the most hype out of any running back we've had in this room this, this offseason. Dude is killer, right? Came on late. We pick him up over Clemson, and, and he's been – people like the inside the building has been raving about this guy. Right? He's going to be excellent. So if you're rotating these running backs in, how are, the, how are these trenches going to fit in, right? Yeah. They they don't have Kayvon Thibodeau anymore. Not saying they can't find another guy to fit, replace him, but that's a big shoe to fill, right? And, and you're, not, you're not like a Georgia where you can just replace him with a, more five stars. Not saying they don't have good talent, but Georgia, you just plug and play. Like I said, Jalen yeah, Carter, Jalen Carter, Jalen Carter took over for Devontae Wyatt, and he was the best D lineman on the field. So, like, we're just like, I don't know, we just call it stupid deep, I guess. <laughs> so, another one that I wanted to ask you about, um, I believe it's October 29th. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but the matchup with Florida. I wanted to ask mm-hmm. you about that one specific. Again, coming to Atlanta, but Florida seems like it's like they're kind of getting there, and it's like okay, no, never mind. Dear, like in the middle of the season, and then again, they're kind of getting there, and then oh no, ne- never mind. You know, so like, I mean, what what is your opinion on that October October twenty ninth? Yeah, the October twenty ninth matchup with Florida. We win. We you win. Yeah. Uh, listen. I understand that you're replacing, right, like first-year head coach and stuff like that. And Billy Napier, time will tell. But Dan Mullen left that program in a situation where it's going to take too much too much yeah. time, too much time. Because yeah. it's just a toxic culture. Like you're having to change a toxic culture, catch up with recruiting because, listen, recruiting season is 365 days a year. There's no recruiting season. It's year-round. Let's, just, let's be honest. It's just one of these things. And I just don't see it in year one. It's going to be a problem. I just don't. Like, it would not surprise. Like, listen, AR or Anthony Richardson, I'm not going to say that. Anthony Richardson might be an excellent quarterback for them. Just not against Georgia. Yeah. I, I mean, I listen, if, I, if I'm wrong, I'll come back here and say that I guess I was wrong. 
I, I just don't see it. And, see their, and their defense, their defense is going to have a fun time trying to stop that offense. I'm telling yeah. you, people sleep on our offense. People keep sleeping on our offense. I just keep looking at them and like, okay. Just wait. They're going to be uh, sorely mistaken. Yeah. In my opinion, yeah. So you mentioned you mentioned that you believe that you guys are going to go 12 and 0 this year. And I'm going to kind of flip the question around. What do you say your ceiling is being 12 and 0? What do you see that your floor is? You know, like an unsuccessful season in your eyes. Uh, first world problems, but 10 and 2. That's fair. Who would you say the two would be? I think you look at if I had to choose two, Mississippi State would be one. And because it's in Mississippi State, like I, I was, I was telling Christian, and people, people sleep on Mississippi State, but that air raid, you have to play the right kind of defense, or you get cooked. You get destroyed. Ask, yeah. ask LSU, ask LSU a couple years back. Ask A and M. Yeah. Jo- ask listen, Oklahoma no, fans when listen, Mike Leach was in Texas Tech. <laughs> they're gonna look. How can I say this? Will Rogers is is, is a. Excellent quarterback, top half in the SEC. But because he plays at Mississippi State, you don't get the credit that they get, right? He will – Mike Leach will 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 do anything and everything, you know, to stop the run. They, they did it when we had him a couple years back. But we had – like, this is when JT Daniels came out for us. But, you know, we had to, like, legitimately sit there and score almost every time because yeah. – they they listen. They tore they torched us, but because of the you know, because of the defense that you got to play, right? A lot of people look at the yardage, right? The yardage is going to look terrible, but the points is where it's key because if you play the right defense, soft zone, you're 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 preventing the deep pass, right? They're going to pass the ball. That's what they're going to do. You have to play up and come to them, right? Yeah. Ben, don't break defense is a perfect way to describe a game against Mississippi State. We played him as a freshman and about lost. It was a close game. You've got him as a junior now. He's had two more years in that system. So it, it's going to get good. interesting. And you got a full – listen, you got to deal with the cowbells. And I don't care what anyone says, Will Ferrell will tell you more cowbell. It, it creates havoc, okay? <laughs> it really does. It just does. Krishna, I don't know if you've been in any spaces with anybody with SEC ties. They all hate – Hate cowbells, Sarksville for the cowbells. Yeah, I mean, I I pop around in a lot of them, mainly mainly A and M because that's where I'm. You know, I'm going to be moving to College Station. I got to know what I'm looking at when I go to Caulfield every weekend. So that's that's the one for me. But I mean, it's I'm excited for Georgia season. I obviously, if it came to a Georgia OU matchup, I want to get revenge for the Rose Bowl. I know you said we were going to mention it, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it again. So. I'll if let it, you do it. I'll, yeah, I'll, just, if it, I'll oblige. If it came, <laughs> if it came to a matchup against Georgia, I want to beat y'all in double overtime and just kind of you know feel that feel that like on the opposite side. <laughs> I know when we lost, I went and cried, but Georgia is one of those teams for me, man, that I have a hard time rooting against this upcoming year. I think I'm like everybody. I want to see Alabama lose, and when it gets the SEC championship and back in the playoffs, I want to see Alabama lose. And I want to see him lose twice to the same team again. Nothing would make me happier to see Bryce Young not have another natty and go to the NFL draft. That's that'd be harsh, great. That's harsh to say, but that's just where I'm at. I hope Alabama beats Texas badly when they go into Austin. I think they're going to have a pissed off Nick Saban and a pissed off Bryce Young. Cannot wait. Same kind of energy against the Georgia game, but I man, Georgia's one of those teams that I just I want to see. I love stories of adversity and back to backs, and I, I want to see it. I'm all here for it. But so we're, we're so we're talking Oklahoma, Georgia again. Oh yeah, man. I'm I mean, here for it. I'm just I'm just saying, man. Like, if it got to that point, right? I I will be the first to tell you. I think Oklahoma is going to go 11 and one. I think with this new staff, we're going to find a game that we get ourselves into where we shit the bed. And I do think we win the conference. Possible playoff berth depends on how the rankings turn out. Whatever. Do I want to make the playoffs? Me personally, not necessarily. I'd like to get a bowl win under Brent Venables before I go back into the playoffs. But I think we'll go 11 and one this year, and I would love to meet Georgia and the sh- you know the Sugar Bowl or some crazy bowl, or I'd love to meet him in the playoffs and get revenge. But if it didn't, if those cards weren't played, man, I hope Georgia, I hope Georgia beats Alabama twice this year. We, uh, in my opinion, 
we won't. And and the crazy thing is, I would much rather lose in the SEC championship game and still get to the playoffs. The same recipe we did last year. But my my thought was this: Bama's on a revenge tour. Yep, there's right. no there's no question about that. There's no, and I get it. I get it. But when you look at the talent that they've got, listen, Bama still got some question marks. Yeah, they do. Right, they still got some question marks, but they got elite, they like Heisman Heisman winner. <laughs> Listen, two Heisman candidates, in my opinion, at least. Absolutely. Will, Will Anderson should have been in the Heisman top. Should have been in the Heisman top Absolutely. last year. And he was the best player. He was the best player. Don't give me this Aiden Hutchinson bullshit. Don't give me that. Don't give me that. Because, Aiden Hutchinson was close, listen, but not close Listen, enough. you want you want this stat? Jamari Sawyer in the Orange Bowl is a guard in the NFL right now. Neutralized Aiden Hutchinson all game. All yep. game. Go back and look at his stats in all in the in that game. Nothing. He got one. I think he got one tackle for loss because he sniffed out a uh, screen. Outside of that, nothing. Yeah. That's a six round pick. Yeah, that's nuts. Well, hey Robert, man, we appreciate your time, brother. I always love getting on here and talking college football. I talk with my buddies about it for hours. That's all me and my buddies do is go on Facetime and just talk about random teams. We'll talk about Vanderbilt. Talk about anybody. So. We appreciate you it's for coming fair. on, man. You are always welcome. Would love to have you back on later in the season. And um, yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Thanks for having me on, my man. Yes, sir.